Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome back to another review. Up today I have an American locomotive which I think is going to be absolutely fascinating. I'm truly going to be covering some new ground today and I'm really really excited about it. So this will be my first American full fat electric locomotive. It's going to be my first DCC sound locomotive that isn't just a Hornby TTS locomotive and it's also quite a bargain as well which in this hobby is kind of a first as well isn't it. So the locomotive, wait till you see this one, is this. It is by Backman and I did import it from the States. I believe this is known as the Pennsylvania Class G G1 locomotive and yes diesel steam electric it isn't clear is it from the outside but this is indeed an electric locomotive so how much did I pay for this well according to train will I couldn't find this on Backman's website for some reason but according to train will the RRP for this is 189.99 that's dollars and think of that that's kind of the price you'd expect to pay for this without DCC or sound and yet for 189.99 we have full fledged sound that sounds pretty interesting. I've noticed it does say sound value, so I'm guessing we're not going to be getting like the proper DCC sound that you'd get if you bought an expensive decoder, because at $189, there wouldn't be very much budget left for a locomotive, and as you can see, this is a huge one. However, I did not pay the RRP. I paid $89.99. That is £65, £65 for a gigantic electric locomotive, presumably with lights, also with DCC sound. I'm absolutely blown away by that already. I have genuinely no idea what to expect. So I've had this for a little while. Today is the day I'm going to get this out. We'll find out together whether it's any good. Can it really be any good at that price? I don't know, it looks absolutely awesome through the front of the box. It really does look incredible, but whether it actually is or not is yet to be seen. So let's find out. So I warn you folks, I reckon this is going to be a strange one. Even the wheel configuration is going to be completely unique, I think, in my collection. Let me show you the end of the box. So the version I went for is item number 65302. It is HO scale, it's a GG1 with DCC sound, and it's in the Pennsylvania Railroad Tuscan Red 5 stripe which actually looks incredible, doesn't it? It puts me in the mind of sort of Crimson Lake, maybe, as used by the LMS. Reminds me of that, so I don't know, maybe it was inspired by that. Maybe it just looks nice, and that's a coincidence. I'm not too sure, but yeah, for £65, what on earth should I expect? Well, if I show you the end of the box here, or sort of the bottom of the box, you can see a little bit of information here. So it says the locomotive has digital technology. Yeah, we know what that is. Over here, you can see a little bit more information. So it's got sound as per the prototype. It contains a can motor, so that's good, and die-cast chassis as well. So we're not just talking some cheap plastic either, and it does feel really quite heavy. Even at 189, this seems unusually cheap for a Backman, doesn't it? I don't know the story, maybe this is from 10, 15 years ago. I really don't know, I'm just thoroughly confused by this one. So I think we'll have to just get it out and take a look. This will be the first time it's come out of the box, and it's not a very good box, I should say. I'm hoping the Loco is a little bit better quality than the box is. Um, luckily, the seller, I bought this from Trainworld, luckily they packaged this and the other things I bought up really, really nicely. So. I'd be surprised if there was any damage, but uh, you never know. Okay, so this thing is a monster. I'll have to pull in one of our sort of British diesels or something at some point and show you the size comparison. But yeah, that is absolutely beastly. It really, really is. Okay, very interesting. We'll take a closer look at that in a second. Okay, I've got a wadge of paperwork here, and the first thing I've spied is the exploded diagram. My God. So this has given me already quite a good idea of what we're dealing with here. I mean, yes, there's a lot of detail in different parts, but there's the mechanism. Look, we've got a nice looking cam motor in the middle. Looks like we've got dual flywheels there. It looks like 12 wheel drive. So it's all wheel drive except for the bogies. This does not look like a cheap beginner's model, does it? That's kind of what I was expecting when I bought this. All right, let's have a look at the back. Uh, okay, so that looks a little bit generic, doesn't it, about DCC. Feel free to pause and read that if you'd like. 
What else have we got inside here? I'm actually desperate to get onto the logo, actually. Uh, okay, uh, quick start guide. Okay, so that's for the DCC sound value. Let's have a quick look. I suppose I'll look at this again before we get started. Throttle features. So that's just some of the decoder features which enables you to control the loco. It does say there that it supports up to 128 speed steps. I thought I saw on the other booklet that it was only 28 speed, so obviously it supports higher modes than that, but the decoder itself can perhaps only put out 28, so that's maybe a little bit naff, but I'm not entirely sure. We'll have to see how it performs, I suppose. I do think this is quite generic though, because you can see there's something about steam effects, so I don't think any of that will apply. There are diesel effects though, uh, again, I don't really think that applies. Maybe that's more likely to apply than the steam. So what have we got? Engine exhaust, three selectable air horns. No, I don't really think that's applicable. So what this is going to sound like is a bit of a mystery at the moment, although hopefully, as long as it works, we will find out. And there is a lot in here. Important notice, we saw this before, that's, I don't know, I forget what it was. It wasn't important though, <laughs> not to me anyway. Uh, yeah, that's all a load of rubbish. We're still not through it, my word. <sighs> right. We've got some accessories, so let's take a quick look. I say some accessories, it literally just looks like some ladders or steps, whatever you want to call them. Nicely painted, actually, and the locomotive did appear to be nicely painted as well. So I think with that, we're ready to get the thing out. I really, really don't know what to expect with this. I think I'm gonna like it though, because it, it seems to be really unusual. Okay, my God, look at this thing. So first of all, the finish looks absolutely stunning. Can you see the way that's shining? Look at that, this is not some cheap plastic tat at all. Wow, and the pantographs look marvelous as well. They absolutely do. Can I get those to raise? I don't wanna mess around with those too much actually. Let's lift the model out and wow, this is seriously, seriously heavy. Very, very heavy indeed. I'll get it on the scales and let you know. The box did say that this has a die cast chassis, so that might explain it. But do you know what? The decoration, the finish, the level of detail on this looks really, really impressive. Now, I haven't looked closely at this yet, but right now, even if this didn't have the sound, I would be pretty impressed with this for £65. For £65 with DCC and sound, this is just getting more insane by the moment, isn't it? Look at this, this is actually fantastic. I really do like this. Would we say this is streamlined? Because I do like streamlining, and obviously you can see the lining is very, very Coronation Scott-esque, isn't it? it? Seems to be done really, really nicely. Wow, do you know what? Do you know what? I think this is gonna be one of those days where I discover something epic. Backman. What a good value loco from Bankman this is. Or so I think. We'll investigate a little bit more closely in just a second. But first of all, here's some history on the class. So 139 Pennsylvania Railroad class GG1s were built by General Electric and Atluna Works between 1934 and 1943. So quite early on, as you might expect. Now, despite their huge length of almost 25 meters, very huge locomotives, don't forget this is HO scale, the design was still capable of traversing tight curves due to the ball and socket joint, which connected the two halves of the locomotive frame together. The engines ran on 11,000 volts AC collected via pantograph and supplied to 12 AC motors, giving the GG1s a power output of approximately 3,450 kilowatts and producing a maximum speed of up to 100 miles per hour. Retirement of the class was completed in 1983, in which year the last run ever was completed. Most of the class have been scrapped, although quite a healthy number have been preserved. I think there are 16 left in preservation, and you can see those at various different museums over in the States. So there it is then, up close and personal for you, the Backman Pennsylvania Class GG1 Electric. And yes, up close, this does look a little bit more simple than I perhaps thought it was. But you know, I really don't mind for once. Firstly, because that is absolutely reflected in the price. And secondly, because the thing looks absolutely incredible, doesn't it? I love the shape and the design of it. In fact, I'm a huge fan of this already, and I've only been familiar with it for a few minutes. But also, the sheer quality with which this is presented has seriously impressed me. 
everything down to the build quality so that's the way the different parts have been fitted absolutely top notch can't fault that the decoration looks absolutely wonderful i'll go into some more detail on that in just a second and as i've already mentioned the finish just makes this i think if this had a really toy like and plasticky finish this would not be anywhere near as effective a model as it is. But the fact that it has that, not, it's not glossy because I think that would make it toy-like as well, but just that slight satin finish, the way it just slightly catches the light in certain places is absolutely fantastic. I love this thing. It's also incredibly heavy. It weighs in at 592 grams, which is more than the Backman P. That's the Class 45. It's actually the third heaviest locomotive I have on record since I bought my scales a couple of years ago. I mean, for the price, it's absolutely epic, isn't it? It seriously is. So let's take a look at some of the decoration to start with. So we've got the lovely Pennsylvania Railroad logo right there. That looks great, very nicely applied. The lining across the side of the logo is superb. And this is what I'm talking about. Look at the accuracy there. There's nothing about the decoration that would break the illusion as far as I'm concerned. Every single number, as you can see, Every word that is printed onto the side is all 100% crisp with no smudges and nothing wonky. You can kind of see where two different tampo prints join together, but that's probably the only issue I would have. And I'm not even sure I would call that an issue. So yeah, the decoration, the livery, as you might say, is absolutely marvelous. And I think because this is presented so nicely, it leads you to expect the level of detail perhaps to be a little bit more than it is. When in fact, yes, we do have quite a lot of molded detail. So all of the grills, for example, are just made of plastic. And don't get me wrong, all of this is more than reasonable for the money. Up on the roof, a lot of the different parts are just part of the molding. And on the end here, you can see a lot of the detailing is again, just part of the molding and it has been painted. However, if there was any sloppiness in that painting there or the decoration, that would look a lot less effective than it does. But because it has been done with such precision, it actually doesn't look half bad, does it? So that's all right. There are quite a few separately fitted parts though, having said that, I mean, you've got the nice handrails aside each door. The doors do not open or anything like that, by the way, which I suppose is quite obvious. You've got nice separately fitted glazing as well around the sort of dual cabs, I'm guessing it's got dual cabs, as well as the sort of handrails and sort of bars across the cab windows there, which is pretty cool. The pantographs are real quality as well. These are all metal, which I think really makes a difference. I'm not sure if they can actually pick up power through the pantographs. I guess if I take the body off, that might be obvious. But if I'm careful, I can get one of these to lift up. I'm not gonna run it in this formation or anything, but look at that, that reaches up really high actually. Over here in the UK, the pantographs, I'm pretty sure didn't reach up that high, particularly when you bear in mind this is HO, so technically a slightly smaller scale than double O but those are real quality. I mean, I've seen some very flimsy pantographs in my time on much more expensive locos, on locos that cost more than this without any DCC or anything on board. So that is reasonably impressive. You can see we have the separately fitted horns. I believe those are just made of plastic and the molding, I suppose, isn't 100% perfect on those, but they are sort of obscured a little bit by the pantographs, which isn't too bad. I should say there seems to be no interior detail, which is a bit of a shame. The windows are very, very tiny, so I suppose, again, that's not gonna be a big deal, but you can see behind the doors, for instance, you've just got the chassis visible, and there is no cab detail inside the cabs. As far as I can tell, like I say, I'll probably try and take the body off if it's nice and easy and we'll get a better look inside. But at the moment, no, it doesn't look like there's any detail inside there. Let's take a look at the bogey detail then, for want of a better term. Look at the wheels, for instance. Even the wheels are unusual. I don't think they're the same design as bullied sort of box pop wheels, but I wonder if the designers of this were going for the same sort of idea. So cast wheels, designed to be quite economical, strong, able to support lots of weight, but fairly lightweight and cheap to produce. Either way, they're very interesting. I'd like to have a better look at those. And as you can see, we've got plenty of bogey detail as well. I think those are all just molded details on there but they certainly do the job, don't they? And then we've got the uh, Easy Mate, I think you call these couplings. These are not NEM or anything. They are screwed to the model, so if you wanted to, you could replace them with something else. And then you've got this sort of separately fitted um, manual coupling device here, which I once called a handrail, but no, that's not the case. 
So hopefully you can get a sense of the level of detail. Yeah, it's a reasonably simple model as far as the separately fitted parts go. However, that doesn't matter because of the sheer quality of the assembly and the decoration and the finish, and of course, just the design of the thing. I mean, what a wonderful idea from Backman to produce something like this. This is gonna be an instant hit with me, I think, provided the mechanism is competent and that the performance is good, and I guess if the sound is impressive as well, this will definitely jump into my good books. I'll investigate the mechanism, we'll get it down onto the track, I'll fire up my DCC system, and we'll give this its first ever run. So there she is then, the absolutely stunning Backman GG1 down onto the track. I haven't yet connected up the power to my DCC controller because I have a feeling the sound might start as soon as I do that, and I don't want to hear the sound until I'm recording. So we're yet to do that. First of all though, I have had a good look at the mechanism, and let's just say it's a Backman mechanism, say no more. I've seen better, I've also seen worse. First of all though, the pickup situation is really, really good. So all 12 driving wheels have copper pickups, wiper pickups going to them, which is really, really good. The bogey wheels, as you can see, pick up through the axles, which means four out of eight of the bogey wheels pick up, meaning that we've got eight pickups going to each rail, so continuity should be no problem at all. We don't have any bearings on the axles though, which is a bit of a shame, bit cheap and nasty, although the model was cheap, so that's fair enough. I should say that the chassis that the axles sit into is made of plastic though, so wear and tear shouldn't be too bad. There's also no easy access to the bearings and the gear set. Uh, the base keeper plates are sort of clipped on, which is a really horrible design. I'm not so keen on that. The body is a bit easier to remove, four screws, and you get to the chassis, as you can see here, nice big heavy chassis. This does have contacts for the pantograph. They come down to the circuit board. That's a really, really nice feature. And there's kind of like a switch on the circuit board so that you can enable and disable that. I'm assuming that this is the speaker enclosure, in which case I'm quite impressed with the sheer size of the speaker. That's really quite a big one. Hopefully it will sound good. I should say I did not find a decoder socket on this loco, which suggests that the DCC equipment could be fully integrated. That might be a problem, particularly if the decoder is a cheap one that doesn't perform too well. It's not gonna be very easy to change it for something better, so bear that in mind. We do have some chunky flywheels fitted. I didn't disassemble this any further to see the motor, but there are the flywheels and you can see there are bearings on the bogies where the worm drive sits. Now the gauging was interesting. Overall, they were a little bit tight at something like 14.6 or 14.7 millimeters back to back. One of the axle though was nearly at 16 millimeters, which means that there was totally something wrong with that wheel. And that's why I did have to go ahead and disassemble that bogey so that I could re-gauge that wheel. That's very, very poor quality. I'm not impressed with that. Overall though, yeah, the mechanism isn't terrible. Let's now plug in the DCC controller and see if we get any sound from this straight away. Let's find out. I heard like a pop, <laughs> just a really gentle pop, but I did not hear anything. So I believe it was function eight that was mute. So if I press that, will we get sound? No, <laughs> didn't get anything there. Let's press the bell button. Oh, oh. Okay, so the loco is responding then. We know that. So how do we turn on the sound? I mean, function naught is lights, and I'm not seeing any lights. Okay, interesting. Function two is supposed to be air horn. Oh. I tell you what, the quality of the sound from this is excellent. At this price as well, why can't Hornby's TTS sound a little bit better? We've got a short air horn. Oh, it sounds marvellous. Okay, dynamic brake. Cool, it sounds gorgeous, folks. It really does sound good. And this is supposed to be value DCC. And we don't know what we're missing over here in the UK with TTS. Flashing light, does that do anything? Oh. That really sounds like a diesel. That sounded a lot like a diesel, that's strange. Number boards. That sounds like an engine. Is this really a, a, an electric sound chip? I'm not sure. These are not now matching up with the instructions. Right, is the loco going to work then? Let's try that. Oh, off it goes. <laughs> well, that was a bit speedy, wasn't it? Well, it is working. I'm just not 100% sure how we get the sound on. 
Oh, it's fast. Blimey. It's very fast. Sorry about that. It kind of just disappeared out of shot. Uh, right, OK. Well, let me try and get this started a bit more slowly then, shall we? Can I ease this up a bit? Three miles an hour? OK. So that's all right. It's actually beautifully smooth, isn't it, on DCC? Does it go any slower than that? Let's try it at two miles an hour. No, well, I managed to get it down to one there. No, I think that's about as slow as it goes. So it's a bit like that other Backman Loco I looked at. The slow speed, the actual slowness of it isn't that impressive, but at least it, it's limited so that you always get smooth performance right down to the very bottom. OK, I just need to figure out now then how to get the sound enabled. Bear with me, I'll come back to you when I've done it. Right, well that is super annoying. I will say straight off the bat, I don't know whether it's just my rubbishy Hornby controller that is causing the problems, but I've been through every single function listed on the instruction manual. Uh, I think there's only eight of them. None of them are doing anything to produce sound. I've looked it up online. It seems that on DCC operation, the things are just silent and you just have the option to play the sounds that I've already played. And I guess that's fair enough because it's an electric locomotive, which are largely silent. But when you plug it into the analog controller, listen to this. You do get the sounds. Well, that sounds like a diesel. I'm not sure whether that's accurate or not. Let's try it backwards. You do get sound as the thing runs. So I really am confused by that. I mean, it's, it's rubbish because as soon as you slow it down, it cuts off. You get the bells playing, it's all sort of automated. So is there no way to automate this on DCC? If not, that's really annoying. I did manage to get the lights working. Uh, there's a dimmer on there, so if you, can, you can use that. Yeah, I don't understand. Uh, I think I'm literally going to run this on DC, because at least then we do get some sound out of it. <laughs> but yeah, it's a shame that we can't have the incidental sounds on it as the thing's running on DCC. All right, if there's no motor noise or whatever, but what about the brakes hissing as you slow the thing down? It's just silent, except for the functions that you can enable yourself. Uh, however, as you can see, the slow speed is absolutely fine. Ooh, got a different noise there. Got a, a bit of a horn going on. I mean, yeah, at least on DC, you can see just what a good crawler this one is. Any slower? Yeah, it's really beautifully smooth. Very much so. So I think I'm going to get this thing run in. I might just switch over to DCC again once I've gotten sick of this noise. It might just be this noise the whole time, in which case I'm not that bothered. But let's set it to 50% speed and see how it gets on around the layout. Alright, so it seems to be working absolutely fine on DC. It's handling all the curves without any problems at all. I am completely confused by the sound. I mean, this sounds like a diesel that's playing right now. And obviously it's DC, it's analog, so there's nothing you can do about it. This is the sound it makes on analog, as far as I can tell. Maybe it's not supposed to be a diesel engine, maybe this is some other equipment that the thing's got on board. But yeah, to me that just sounds like a diesel. It doesn't, the sound doesn't change. The engine noise doesn't change, it doesn't rev up or rev down or whatever as you change the speed. It's just the same noise constantly. I don't know, maybe there's a way to change that. But yeah. While it sounds absolutely great, the quality of the sound is fantastic, uh, it's a bit useless, isn't it? I mean, unless you're willing to sit there and push a button on the controller, at the moment, I'm not aware of any other way to have this thing produce sounds on its own. Yeah, I, I don't know. I guess I'll switch over to DCC and finish running it in on there, see if it does make some more sounds as I speed up and slow down the loco. I'm not sure if it will, though. Okay, well, I'll see you in a little while after it's run in and then I'll couple up something to it. Okay, there we go, there we go. Is it gonna stop? <laughs> so that's running in completed. I'm back on DCC now, and I'm not gonna say anything too harsh about the sound because let's be honest, it could be me. I don't really know what I'm doing. It could just be something that I'm doing wrong. If I am doing something wrong, please do comment below and I will try and sort this out. One thing that is definitely not my fault, though, is the rubbish instructions for the decoder. I mean, there's a section for steam, there's a section for diesel, but there's nothing for electric. So ultimately, I don't know 
whether or not I'm doing it right. I have no way of knowing. I don't know what any of the sounds are. I don't know what the different functions on the decoder are. Are you telling me Backman went to the trouble of producing, you know, developing and producing a locomotive like this, but no one could be bothered to write up some specialized instructions for it? I don't know, that is absolutely ridiculous. However, one issue that was Hornby Railmaster's fault was the functions, I've now set them up to toggle, which is not easy to do. I don't know how I've done it, but I have managed to do it. So let's say, for example, I mean, like I say, I don't know what this is. If this was a diesel, this would be the dynamic braking, or if it was a steamer, this would be a steam release, but that's F4. So if I do that, uh, this now lasts a bit longer. And then I think the other one, uh, which is F5, flashing light, apparently. Uh, well, this is not a flashing light, but if I push it, we get this sound, which sounds like a diesel engine. I don't know what it is because the instructions say that F5 is either not applicable or a flashing light. <laughs> well, I don't know what it is because the instructions don't cover this locomotive. How annoying is that? But that noise does not change with the running. You can do whatever you like. It's just that same noise. So I think that's what was happening on DC mode. I don't know why. I don't know why I'd want it, but that's what it is. So we'll turn that off if I can. There. Phew. The performance, though, is absolutely awesome. I mean, I suppose it's not dreadfully slow, which would be the decoder's fault. But if I get it to crawl at its lowest speed, it is at least really, really smooth. There we go. So I suppose it gets the benefit of the doubt there. I don't think they're very good decoders, are they? Let's be honest. But for the price, I'm not complaining. And that is buttery smooth. It really is. And there's some great talk there as well. I measured attractive effort of 0 0.97 newtons, which should be enough to haul sort of way over 50 coaches. It's absolutely unbelievably powerful, and that's due to the heavy die-cast chassis and all of the weight, of course. So, yeah, I mean, overall, it's okay. The sound is all right. It's just I'm not really seeing the benefit of it. It's nice, I guess, to be able to push a button and have a bell ring or whatever. I can do that, by the way. Let's try. There we are. I mean, that's great, isn't it? But... I don't know, I mean, if, you'd, if I'd have paid a lot extra for the sound, I'd be really annoyed. But I think, luckily, because it was so inexpensive, it's not a big deal. But I suppose, I suppose it's quite nice to be able to do that. Besides that, though, it's a shame that you don't have the automatic sounds, the braking and such, as the Loco runs. I don't know if it's supposed to or not, I could be doing it wrong. But as it is at the moment, straight out of the box, that is not working. And the instructions don't explain how to make that work, if that is a feature. I'll do a follow-up video, though, if that proves to be not the case. Okay, well, I apologise in advance for the rake I've set up. It's got to start with the converter car to convert from the easy mate to the tension lock coupling that Hornby use. And then I've set up some LMS coaches because they match the locomotive. I know it's not prototypical and maybe I'll get some proper coaches for this one day, but I don't right now. So let's go reverse. Let's couple up to the train, see what happens. Right, it is such a good performer, but it's a bit clunky to run on uh, Railmaster. So it's a bit dodgy, isn't it, as always. Are we coupled? If not, oh yeah, we are. I was gonna say, if not, it's probably not the Loco's fault. It's that crusty box van behind it. But let's go then, let's set it for forwards and let's go for a bit of a speed. I can make a noise if I want. Here we are. Better late than never. And then on the inside, well, in fact, on the other lines, I have other electric locomotives. Uh, these are British ones though. So we have the Hornby 70, is this a 71 or? forget now, I think it is a 71, yeah. So there you have that one, that's a really nice run of that. And then on the inside line we have another electric, I've chosen this one for obvious reasons because it's kind of old fashioned and kind of matches the GG1. So this is the Heldren, Helgen Metropolitan Bobo. It worked on the London Underground in fact back in the day. Horrible runner as you can see, it's very jittery. But it's Helgen, so such is life. Anyway, see which other electrics you can spot on the layout, and there is an odd one out. So comment below if you spot it. So as you can see, it really is a beautiful runner. It's ultra smooth, very, very reliable. Uh, I've never seen it derail yet. I think that green box fan looked as though it was about to, but it hasn't so far. Yeah, it's a really, really lovely performer. The lights are good, nice and bright. The sound is pointless, I would go ahead and say. At the moment, the way the sound is working for me, it's pointless. Maybe if there's another mode I can put it in, there would be a point to it. Otherwise, yeah, I'm glad I didn't pay a huge amount for it. 
Performance wise it's fine, it is a little bit on the speedy side I would say, however you can just slow it down and because it's DCC you don't get the amplified voltage drop on the rails so that's okay. If it was running on analog I guess I would have to criticise it for that but because we've got the DCC equipment on board I won't so that's alright. Yeah I mean it looks fantastic, it works really really well, sometimes with the HO locos particularly the larger ones I have seen them struggle on my second radius curves, I've seen them derail but this one's not doing. I'm really, really impressed with how reliable this is. And for £65, it is just incredible. Absolutely awesome. So there we go. What an epic addition to any collection. I mean, it's not going to be for everyone, is it? Because it's not going to fit in on a, I don't know, British branch line, is it? But for me, who just likes a bit of everything, this thing is epic. Let's have some ratings then for the overall really impressive Pennsylvania GG1 by Backman. So the level of detail overall I've given three and a half stars. There was a lot in the detail that is worthy of praise. I mean the decoration was absolutely fantastic. However, it was a little basic in places. I mean, you've got no realistic cab interiors, which is something that we do get on models over here in the UK. And quite a bit of the detailing was just moulded on as opposed to separately fitted, which maybe up close makes the model a little bit less convincing. However, it does have lights and sound. And like I say, the way that this was actually painted was marvellous. So not too bad at all. The performance, maybe I've been a little bit generous here but I've decided to give this five stars. Now, the reason I think it's a bit generous is that the decoder is holding the loco back from sort of crawling amazingly slowly. However, at the lowest speed step this decoder can deliver, the performance is beautifully smooth. It really, really is. And in fact, at, at any speed step from this decoder, the loco is beautifully, beautifully smooth. It never once derails, it doesn't slow down. It's perfectly constant. The performance for me is perfect. I have no complaints at all, which is quite unusual. So it's got to get five stars. The pulling power is absolutely incredible. 0.97 Newtons, that's the tractive effort. Should be enough for around 53 coaches. That's right between the Backman 37 and the Class 20. So it's very, very powerful as a result of its weight. The mechanism, again, is really, really good. I mean, you've got so many pickups, eight to each rail, that's fantastic. The motor, I haven't been able to find out whether it's three or five pole, so it doesn't lose marks for being a three pole motor, although that does get the benefit of the doubt, so bear in mind, I'm not sure what motor this runs. However, it does have dual flywheels. It's got the working pantograph, really, really nice chassis design, actually. Doesn't have any bearings on the wheel set, though, and that is something I do tend to deduct a mark for, so it loses one for that. The quality, again, I was almost going to give this a five star because there's loads and loads of metal work on board. Such a heavy chassis on this. Very, very heavy loco. Beautiful finish. The actual finish of the paintwork is marvellous. And also the finish of the assembly is fantastic as well. No glue marks. Everything fitted straight. It's just that gauging issue. I mean, one of those axles was horribly out of gauge, which prevented the loco from working properly straight out of the box. And it actually required me to fix it. So it loses a star for that. Value for money, though, I mean, I mean, 189.99, I don't know, I forget what that is in pounds now, it's about 150 quid. For such a high quality locomotive with DCC, so that's lights and sound, even at the RRP, I would struggle not to recommend this. However, for the price I paid from Train World, 65 pounds, it's absolutely crazy. It's more than 50% off. What a good deal. So it gets five star. I mean, yes, it's a little bit expensive on the RRP, but you absolutely get what you pay for. So look at that. That's an overall score of 8.70 out of 10. That's a very high score. Into the ranking, there it is, second above the E4 and below the 1P. Folks say that American models are much more expensive than over here in Britain, but I've never seen anything this inexpensive, yet this packed with features over in the UK ever. So I'm very, very impressed. Now you can call me insane if you like, but I literally think this has become one of my new favourites. Yes, I know I'm traditionally known for loving British steam locomotives from yesteryear, and here I am saying that uh, a really crazy looking American electric locomotive from the 1940s is one of my favourites. Maybe I'll need to book in to see a therapist or something. But seriously, this thing has won me over. I, I think it's because I just wasn't expecting very much for what I've paid. And while it's certainly not perfect, it's a world better than I expected it to be. And to be honest, it just looks and runs so, so nicely. I can't help but really, really enjoy it. I think this is wonderful. I mean, is there, are there more models like this? I really want to know now.
so so impressed so there you go then folks i hope you enjoyed that as much as me i mean i thought this was going to be interesting but i didn't expect to enjoy it as much as i have done so that was a lot of fun i mean let me know if you've got one of these what do you think of it is there more that can be done with the sound? Is there a mode that will allow the sound to work normally and sort of synchronise with the operation of the Loco? I think if that was the case, I'd be even more impressed. Uh, and if it is the case, as I say, please do let me know down in the comments. For now, though, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your company. I'd love to try more Locos like this one in the future, so keep those suggestions coming. Thank you again for your company, and I'll see you on the next one. All right, cheers, everybody. Take care.